Hello, welcome to the Daily Live Extra. It's Thursday, the 11th of January. Mm. It's your birthday today. It is. 63. Mm. Is that what it is? It is. Yeah. <clears throat> All the fo- lot, lot of footballers today. Brian Robson, I think, is his birthday. Former Manchester United manager. Yeah, manager, player, and uh, West Brom Middlesbrough manager. Mm. This is true. Um, is it Michael Keane today as well? Yeah, probably. There's a few. There is a few. Mm. Um. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Everton have been linked with Frank Onyeka, who is uh, has just turned twenty six years of age. He is a Nigerian midfield player, six foot, plays for Brentford. He's made fifty six appearances for Brentford and scored zero goals. Um, Sounds like our kind of player, but he is a defensive midfield player. Um, come from um, Mid Midland in. Before there, because they've got the tie up, haven't they? Brentford with that club, and he had uh, 95 games there and got 14 goals um, <clears throat> in league football. But overall, he got played under 23 times and got 17 for them. Um, but the report says 20 million pounds, and it also says that basically, if Everton sell Amadou Onana, yeah, they'll move for him. So we know it's a very, it's a very a tenuous link but that is what's doing the rounds this morning so therefore we will speak about it there is there will be and is much better value than Frank Onyeka around that's for 20 million pounds yeah. in Europe with younger players Um, and I think if you're gonna go if you're gonna go for someone who is 26 in the Premier League mm. For twenty million, you may as well go to someone like Catherine Tora, who, who might be twenty five, twenty six million. Who's better, got a higher ceiling, but there is others. There's others there as well. I'm not saying Catherine Tora will come yet, but they're the ones you, you try to get, the ones with the higher ceiling. But this is all based on um, whether Everton sell Amadou or Nana, of course. Kefran Torum is Lillian Turan's son and brother of Marcus Turan, who have been linked with Everton in the past, but now plays his football in Italy with Inter. 20 million for a 26-year-old? No. Not for you? No, not for me. Uh, if you're going to pay 20 million, or you're going to pay anything, bring in someone young, bring in someone who's got a sell-on, and... Mm-hmm. Uh, some kind of ceiling or bri- or at least go out and get someone who's got a who, you know just think for 20 million 20 I know 20 million is not loads in the market anymore but I think for Everton to do what they want to do I think 20 million is something you'd put down on a young player and, and try and build them up um, and have a bit of a strategy behind it mm. um, or certainly not be buying cast offs from Benford. Yeah. Doesn't sound like the best move, really. No. Everton should be looking and thinking, what would Brentford do? Yeah. And trying to follow that might be a little bit of a better um a better option. Because like you said, there are good players yeah. around. Um has Hubert Drago gone anywhere? No, he was linked with someone the other day. I'd, I'd rather, I'd rather have a player on loan for the rest of the season. Yeah, yeah, and, and make make the decision and, and make decisions in the next couple mm. of months about, like, say, who and Anna, who, who, who mm. if there was a, if it was a replacement for Onana, to be honest, mm. I wouldn't want to just jump in with for a player straight away. Um, yeah, because you never get it's 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 got Ashley Williams vibes about it, <laughs> doing something like that. So um, I'd rather just keep our powder dry for a little mm. bit longer and then. And then go into the market in the summer, but just don't sell yeah. Onan. It's that simple. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I still don't think Onan will go. No, I don't. To be honest, I with don't you. think Arsenal got the money to mind. Never mind anything else. Hmm. And Everton, I just couldn't see. I've said it. We said it before. I mean, just couldn't see a loan. Could oh. be a situation where Everton loan. How would that benefit? Yeah, this doesn't. Yeah, don't know. It's it's a bit mad, isn't it? It's a bit mad one. But um, 
we'll see, won't we? We will see <coughs> exactly what happens yeah. um, moving forward from there. Because let's be honest, there's not much, not that much going on. I mean, Everton were linked yesterday with Tom Fellows, young West Bromwich Albion player. He's out of contract in the summer. Fabrizio Romano reported this one yesterday. Uh, I haven't seen anything of him, in all truth. Um, West Brom want to keep him. They're speaking soon. Um, but obviously West Brom are currently up for sale at the moment, so they're a bit like us, a little bit dictated uh, by what's going on. But Corberan, Corberan has done a really good job there. The fifth at the moment in the Championship. They're on 42, so the 13 points behind Ipswich, but... You know, they're in there, the three points out of the hull who are outside the playoff, so they'll be open to remain in there. Um, 20 year old midfield player, fellows, so will be a free agent in the summer. Uh, mm. The reports are Everton are looking to, to take him and then loan him out. So we'll see what happens with yeah. that one. Um, he scored. And had a, played well in the, the third round, four one win over Older Shot. And this was an interesting one because it said that he was also on the radar at Triple Seven and mm. their data stuff, and that's why Everton was showing interesting and in, you know showing an interest in him, which is you know considering that we uh, we still don't know when that decision will be made. Mm. I still. I know there's a lot of other stuff going on, but I still believe that um, I still believe that Triple Seven will be given the go ahead to join, to take Everton over because, like I said, I, I think there would be more noise from other people. I really do. I just don't see how if there is another investment group, they're just sitting there quietly in the background. I just, I, I just don't see it personally, but. I don't profess to know. Do you know what I mean? They might want to. Um, they might want to get ahead of themselves. Maybe I don't know. I don't know. One thing's for sure, though. It needs sorting, doesn't it? No, it needs sorting as soon as possible. Because we are just, we are just literally um, bobbing along mm -hmm. without any real direction, without any real game plan of what we're doing next. Um, so yeah. We'll see what happened with that. Uh, Sevilla look like they've won the race for Hannibal Medbury. Um, Everton obviously tried to get him on loan. It would have, it seemed like an easy, not an easy, but a, a, not too much of a difficult transfer to do if the player wanted to come. Yeah. As in, it wasn't too complicated, but it looks like he's uh, he's going to join Sevilla and go out to Spain for the mm -hmm. rest of the season. So. Everton will have to move on from there, and that's just the way it is, isn't it? We'll yeah. go for some players who'll pick it and others won't. And mm -hmm. I could understand that if Trevia were doing really well, but but then again, if he's looking at if he's looking at two teams and thinking, well, they're both near the bottom because we are at the moment, then. Um, Maybe, maybe things. Well, I go to where it's a little bit warmer. It's game time as well. Might mm. be promised game time. Yeah, there's no, there's absolutely no promises at Everton that he'll get anything. I mean, look at the Dan Juma situation. You know, he was our first mm. in in the summer and mm. probably thought he was going to play every game. And you know, as far as he's concerned, it seems like he wants out now and he wants to go to, uh, he wants to go to uh, Leon. So that shows you that this manager has his favourites, and unless. Unless um, they get injured, you're mm -hmm. not getting yourself into the team basically because it doesn't even feel like you can play yourself into into a Sean Dice team. Really, he has his favourites, and that's the end of it. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe, yeah. See, I mean, it, it does. It seems like that with the likes of Dom. Even though I, you know, I, I like Cal, Dom and Calvert Loon, he's not in good form at the moment, and really, Beto should have been given a little bit of a go. Um, and that hasn't happened. Dan Juma, I don't know actually what his what his abilities like in training. Mm. Whether Sean Dice just looks at him and goes, 
he's not going to do what I want him to do, or he isn't tearing it up in training with them. As fans, you sit there and you see players and you go, why don't we give him a go? These fellas see them every mm-hmm. single day, don't they? And if they're not convincing, if you've got in your mind your best 11 and how it plays, mm-hmm. and Sean Dyke seems to have that, and what you can guarantee from them, if someone who's trying to put that under pre- you know, that place under pressure or whatever isn't performing. Yeah, yeah. Then what do you do? He, he might just look and think, what is the point? Yeah. Because I put him in, he's not gonna do it. And so, you know, it's really up to yourself to try to force your way in. And people have forced their way in, Jared Plantway forced his way in. Mm. James Garner forced his way in. Didn't he? And they're their mainstays now. So, you know, one player hasn't been able to, to force his way in is Nathan Patterson. He's just played when we've had injuries, yeah. really. You know, when everyone's fit and available, he, he is always an easy drop, I think, for the manager. But then he's not really, I even though I like Patterson and think there's a, he's got ability, he's not sore it up either. No. You know, whereas you look at Brantwaite, you can't drop Brantwaite. No. And you can't really, you can't drop Michalenko. No, no. And I know Evan haven't got a naturally, um, you know, a left back. But then Ashley Young will be fit, and Ashley Young can't play there. But Michalenko's come in and grabbed it by two hands, you know, with the two hands and gone with it. Patterson hasn't really done that. Dan Juma definitely hasn't done mm-hmm. that. And you'd argue Beto hasn't done it either. So I don't know. You might be right. Maybe the manager is so um, thingy, you know, so kind of set in his ways that it's difficult for players to get in, but maybe Sean Dyke would sit here and go, that isn't the case though, because it's what's the case is these players don't do what we want them to do. Mm. Don't know. Yeah, but but at the same time, I think you have to be, you have to look at the bigger picture mm. and think that there's times when you have to put your players in so they're not getting exhausted mm. and exhausted. No, I do agree with so, that as well. Um, I do think there's a, there's a time and I think we've got to be very careful with the Dan Juma situation because... Although you don't promise him any minutes, I don't think we can afford to lose him. I've seen different opinions. I just don't think we can afford to lose him. No, well, we... I think we'd be right down to the bare bones. I mean, obviously, we don't know what the McNeil situation is, but he's certainly not training. So he's he's obviously not going to play in, in the next couple of games. And it might be till after um, the break mm. that he comes back. But he ain't going to play in the next two games. and that means So that means Dan June is likely to... To play in those games, so unless it's one of those ones where they wait till right to the last minute to make a decision, um, it just seems a bit of a strange one at the moment. And I'm not saying you have to keep everybody happy because you shouldn't. You shouldn't keep everyone happy. It's up to players to impress the manager, not the other way down. But um, and I know Sean Dice does talk quite a lot about about speaking to players who are, on, who are not in the team and keeping them. Trying to keep them motivated and that yeah. kind of thing, um, so I don't think it's an issue from that point of view. But we just we have to be very careful with this Dan Juma thing because he has come on in games over Christmas and he has injected something into the mm. into the team. Okay, it's not it's not had any kind of end product in those games, but at the same time, um, if Dwight McNeil is out for <coughs> any kind of period, and I must admit when I watched it live, I thought I thought that was going to be months. Mm. Just looking at the way the it all unfolded in the game. Um, we'll find out tomorrow, won't we? What the actual situation? Or we might find out. Don't know. If we will. But they've kept it quiet so far. But he's not training, and and I imagine they've been waiting for the, s- the swelling to go down. And um, yeah, just got to utilize all the plays we've got. But we don't. Mm. We just don't have that many, and that's no. what makes it very difficult. Um, well, you know, Joe Tom. I think it's Joe Thomas is reporting. In the echo that Dan Juma is waiting on Everton's decision. Um, Leon really won him. And chasing Villarreal and chasing the player. Um, the echo understands that Dan Juma. Where's it gone? The echo understands that Dan Juma wants to remain at Goodison if he becomes part of Dyche's plans. But he's also grown frustrated with the lack of game time in the first half of the season. Yeah, you can understand that though, can't you? You can understand he was first through the door and he would have expected games. He would have expected 
to being in the manager's plans because he was first through the door, but obviously it was a Kevin Felwell but it, signing. But isn't it isn't it now his opportunity? Well, that's it. Like McNeil it? looks like he's going to be missing now. But it, for whatever it could be, it could be a week, could be two weeks, could be three weeks, whatever. It could be who knows? We just don't know, do we? But hmm? he he's got to take his opportunity. You know, he's done like you said. He come on at Spurs, done well. Hmm. Um, should have. I mean, he should have really got us something out the game. He he done okay. He was bright against City. Was it City when he came on? I think he was very bright against Crystal Palace. Um, it was Fulham. It was Fulham in the cup. He was bright when he came on, and in fact, he should have scored. The, would, would have been the winner. Mm. Yeah, that folly just wide. Should have certainly hit the target. And he was very bright at Palace. He, he did disappear for a little bit in the game, but when you look back at his chances, he could have had a hat trick on the night, really. Yeah. Um, but he he was lively and and that. I, I'm just not massively convinced by him because I think too often he runs down a blind alley. Mm. Whereas he, you can tell he's got ability and he's got pace mm. and he's strong, but he doesn't really like shift it back onto his right foot and bend crosses in. He did against Palace throw some in early with his left foot, which is I think he should do all the time. Yeah. But I would like to see him giving a go on the other side yeah. so he can go on the outside of players. Because really, how often have we seen him cut in him, like bend the shot mm-hmm. at goal? You know, he's not like like Damari Gray, whether you like Damari Gray or not, he was quite good at cutting in and having shots with that right foot. He'd yeah. get away and hit it, wouldn't he? Where Dan Zuma wants to do that, mm-hmm. but doesn't seem to be able to get away from anyone to yeah. do it. So... Maybe he'd be better on the other side. And then once he's pushed it past the fullback, getting mm. balls into the box. But I know that that isn't really his yeah. game. He's more of a wide forward, but they're okay. certainly something We've, we've got just under three weeks till the window shuts. And yeah. we've got three guaranteed games in that time. Possibly four, obviously, if we be, be Palace. And I think for me, I think you keep him, you keep him right up to the 31st. Be a difficult move. Is it going to go on to? Won't be a difficult move, but we'd have to have. I don't think we could let him go and just go. Oh, we'll let. No, going. no, that's what I'm we'd saying. We'd have to have someone that's lined up. That's what I'm saying. We'd we? have to have something lined up. So that's why you keep him. You've got you've got potentially four, definitely three games, potentially four games in that time. <coughs> yeah, you keep him around the squad. I mean, you probably start three, maybe four of those games. Mm. So you keep him around. You play him in the games, and you see where you are. And if it all works out. If it all works out on the 31st and and we've got something sorted for, some, for another player, then you let him go. It wouldn't be a hard deal. It's only a long deal. Mm. He'd be, it's an hour's flight and he'd be dead and he'd be sorted. So, um, yeah, don't do not do anything. Yeah, don't do not do anything. Till, till don't till be too hasty, no, till, are you saying? Well, it favour, you know, make sure it favours us. You know, it's far too many, far too many people. Um clamouring for situations that don't benefit us or 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 don't give us the control. Mm. Um make sure you've got the control on everything and that includes obviously Onana as well. Yeah, definitely. There's no point just giving players away and certainly someone like Onana who's key. Um we have to have as many as we can <laughs> many as we can. Mm. And take it from there because we are going to be in for a tough few months mm. till we, we gain you know we might gain we're, we're in for a tough few years I think we've all got to realise oh yeah that. yeah it's, it's not it's buying stuff yeah, it's yeah. not this isn't like a thing that's going to turn around mm. anytime soon this is this we're in, for the, we're in for this for the next five years I think in terms of this kind of spending I really do I don't think we I think I think you might be right for the, certainly for the next 18 months and maybe a bit longer than that you may well be correct don't think it'd be as long as five, but who knows? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. You've got to, you've, you've got to just make sure your plans are good and you're getting the right players in and you're moving players on. When when is a good time to sell them? You know, you can rebuild if Everton sold Onana in the summer for a decent amount of money. They could re- rebuild with four players, and then if it was Jared Brantway, the window, you know, the summer after on a big contract, mm-hmm. big money, then you could rebuild your whole squad. I mean, that's basically how you do it. But going and buying players who are 26 and 27 for 20 million, then days have got to be gone. Unless that player comes in and, and takes you up and up a notch and he, he guarantees you to do that. I just 
just think we've had too many of those moments in the past six, seven, eight years where those players haven't been guaranteed to take us anywhere. You hope that because they've been at other clubs, decent clubs, that they'd, they'll work, but there's been very little real careful planning on how to build a team and how to build a mm-hmm. squad. And that's why we're where we are, because we paid stupid wages, which has crippled the club at the same time that we've had things go against us, obviously, but also at the same time we're moving stadium and building a brand new stadium that's eating away at the money. Mm-hmm. And you do scratch your head as to why they didn't just go and get a loan. But then they would turn around and say, well, the repayments were a lot, but mm-hmm. the repayments are a lot right now, aren't they? Now, they could turn around and yeah, but overall... We've done the right thing, even though it's difficult in the short term. And we know it can be difficult in the short term. You know, Arsenal, <laughs> when they moved to the Emirates, <clears throat> because they were doing it themselves, they had a good few years where they just didn't spend any money. The the, the thing for them was they had Wenger and they had great players at that mm. time. So he just kept it ticking over. And if they did sell a player, they, would, they had such a good network and he had such a good network that they could, you know, they could get players in and, and progress from there mm. but yeah that's where we are isn't it um, everything Everton this afternoon lads <clears throat> up the trophies um, David Roberts says hi lads sad news about Ericsson mm. and is a cancer diagnosis yeah yeah is that terminal. Ben? terminal yeah got a year left to live has he yeah yeah wow how old is he 75 that's sad that uh, Sophie says no decor right in the training pick it's going to be another struggle on Sunday if he's not there it will be if he's not available won't it um, Stephen Frankie says can, hi chaps can someone clarify the loans issue for me is it maximum four one domestic three international um, so with Harrison and domestic that's the domestic dance unit, means you can only get. No, it's Everton could have six international loans and one domestic. That's what's left. At the moment, currently, it's two domestic and seven international. They're not called loans, they're called short term deals. Uh, that is changing to six from next season. So currently, we've got six available left and one domestic, one left. Um, make sure you hit the like button. It says Ken, like. Dom's tackle on Klein. So what gently brush it? Do you know, right, so yeah, this about Dom's tackle is red card. No. So his red card stays on his record and if he gets booked, sent off again this season, he gets a four-match suspension. Why does it stay on? If it's being rescinded. So he gets a four-match suspension if he gets sent off. How, 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 how just pure nonsense is that? How, if that doesn't, if that doesn't literally, like, tell you about the bureaucracy about a football and the pgml then i don't know what does mm. you get sent off you get it so basically they're going oh no he, he did actually get sent off but the suspension's been so he's been sent That's off weird. but suspension and they've said it's wrong but 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 but, it, you, but still you, got still got, you still got sent off that's nonsense absolute nonsense isn't it that has got to be nonsense that um yeah, it's crazy, Peter Beryl, saying that, yeah. Uh, Richard Campbell says, got to be about how they train, Baz, as you say, which is why we haven't seen more more getting a go. Mm. Um, but sure, that is correct. But like Ped said, there's also, you've got to use them a little bit as well, haven't you? Even if it's just to, to give players a breather with 25 minutes to go, the manager's got to get better at that. But we'll see. Um you can't put it this way. I don't think you can get to this stage of the season with a small squad that you knew you had. And I'm not saying he does complain, but you can't complain, can you? If you mm. haven't used the players at your disposal and have pushed every single player that you are using, that 12, 11, 13 players, you can't really complain. And no. I, again, I know he doesn't really complain, mm. but you know what I mean? It's like, do you know what I mean? It's like when other people complain, Like, and I'll put this on like Eddie Howe, Eddie Howe, oh, we're terrible, we've got injuries and suspensions. Like, yeah, because you played the same team in three games in the space of a week when they were already all, mm. all done in. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I just, I'm not saying that's Dyche uh, necessarily, I'm saying it's all managers. Mm. Managers complain all the time about this or that, and yet they don't they don't uh, move the squad around and say, right, well, we are leaving this player out and we are bringing a young player in because actually 
we've got to look at the overall balance of this of of every game. Why play? Let's see if we can play a game for eighty percent of his fitness every game, rather than going. Well, one game he's going to be under, but then the next three is going to be seventy five. It's like you've got to find that balance, haven't you? And again, that's what the best managers do. Uh, Nomad Scouser says Chimiti doesn't get a mention. Why the fuck buy him? Probably because he's potential, mm. and probably because the down payments on him wasn't very much, and therefore you're getting an asset. He's a big lad. Um, he's doing well for Portugal under 20, scoring every time he plays for them. He's looked all right when he's come on at times for us. He's not. He, you don't look at him and go, he's ready to play now. But mm. and that's probably why I understand. Listen. It's. I thought Everton could have bought Acor Adams, who went for four million pounds. Who's twenty two and has scored a lot of goals, and he's gone off to France. I think he's on one in three in France at the minute. But he would have been a decent backup for a few, for a three or four million. But he's. But they've gone with a potential who could develop and be really good. I don't, well, I don't know. What sad is is he brought a player in, and on paper it looks like we paid like twelve million quid. We haven't. Mm-hmm put nothing down for them and, and it probably be in dips and dabs. But we've sold Tom Cannon. Yeah. Be- better player, more ready. That see moment, that the yeah, yeah. Goals, it, it's goals in the last couple of games. He scored for Leicester. He looks like a player who's, who's and I know it's the championship, but he's got, looks like he's just got a lot more about him. But it's like one of those things, isn't it? You've literally just, you've got money in for this person and you've replaced him with someone that, you know, you haven't had to put anything down for. And then, and then that's almost like the mark, but that's almost like instead you've got to almost look at it and go, these players are never getting to the first team. And actually, the point of is it is Tom Cannon and Sims. You you've got them. Sims we brought in from City. You've got them. You've brought them in. You've you've nurtured them, and you've then sold them and made a decent profit on. It. And Chimiti's like almost like he's not replacing Cannon to be in the team. Almost you've almost got to look at it and go, he's replacing he's replacing Cannon to be the next one to mm. be the next one that you sell and make a profit on. And that's the way you've almost got to think about it. And I when we play sign players like Chimiti, I don't ever really get excited about those kind of plays. Listen, if they come good and the and they get into the first team and they start scoring goals, great. But I think if you have that idea when you buy these plays and go, he's we're we're fattening the cow up almost, and it's it's sad. But again, in the short term, I think that that's just the way, the way you've got to think about things. And I, I, I you know, it is it is a sad way of looking at it. But but I Everton would... had looked out and go, well, we've got what did we get? Seven and a half for Cannon and eight for Sims. Neither yeah. of them the manager fancied exactly. So they got fifteen and a half million. And, and, and he's the, and this is the next mm, one. And Chimiti will be Chimiti will be there and see what happens if he develops to be good enough to play in the first team he'll play and if he won't we'll try and move him on for money just where it is isn't it it's where it is at the moment uh, Rod Ross says third club on the bounce Dan Jume has not got a full time spot must be some sort of issue as I think there is a player there Mr GKHO1 says Villa equals another loss nice and positive there um, Let me just have a look at something here because there's a little bit of sad news. I just want to confirm it. Okay. Uh, Gavin says I'd rather slot Dan Juma in instead of playing a back five with Michael Keane in it. Okay. Everton Dave says I'd get rid of the director of football role and just give full control to the manager. No, that's, that's not a good idea. No, it's not. I, I, it's not the way it happens now because if. What if Dyke's. Just buys certain types of players, and then all of a sudden he, he hits a brick wall. And we start losing games, and then we sack him, and a new manager comes in, and it's like, what are these players? I need this, this, and this. We've got to have, we've got to have someone who's saying, no, we're trying to create this. We're trying to have a younger team with a good sell on, and we're trying to play like this. That has to be the director of football. It has to be a, as a business model. <coughs> I think if it's if you've got loads of money, then maybe you can let the manager have his say a little bit if it, if it isn't going to kill you, whether them players are great or not, and you can move them on or not. Where When you're so close to the line like we are, and will be for a few years, we've got to have someone else directing it, buying players who you can turn into top players and uh, or certainly turn into players who are more valuable and get money back in and keep recycling that money. So... Um, yeah, you shouldn't. Yeah, this is the thing, isn't it? You can't. Um, 
You can't leave it to no one does that. It leads to chaos. It leads to absolute chaos. Um because you, you have you have to have a director of foot the football football's too big now. There's too much going on. Too much going on to just what happens if you sack your manager? You've got a load of players. Again. And we've just done that year after year after year. No, it's an outdated system. Nobody does it anymore. Nobody does it. Mm. Um Yeah. Bill says Hannibal not coming and Dan Juma wants out. Must have an incoming if we allow him to leave. Uh, Steve P says if we did sell on Arnold in the summer for big money, say 75 <coughs> to 80 million, then we replace them as well as bringing in four other players, a left back, two wingers, and an attack and mid who were all young, but ready to play with a high high sell on potential, then I'd be more than happy with that because that's how you improve a team. Hmm? I do have more confidence in us signing young players now. But selling him now and then never seeing the money again, like what happened with Gordon, would just make me feel sick and massively weaken us. Mm. I don't see how, anyway, we couldn't sign a winger this window with Dan Zuma looking like he's leaving and we already needed a winger anyway. Mm. Don't think I could cope seeing James Garner playing on the right wing again, which is what will happen if we don't sign one. It also mean Gomez playing centre mid. I don't think it will happen. Yeah, I, I just don't see us selling him, to be honest with you. Uh, David Goondry says, Morning, gents. Nice and simple. Ped's new throwback top is fire. It's literal fire. There it's like the fire the cavemen invented. There you go. Um, Frank says, Afternoon, everybody, and especially if you're listening, Dexy. Only just caught up with last night's phone in. Must have got dusty in my office. Mm-hmm. That's all I can say. Absolutely amazing. Call. Yeah, Dexy's boss. Um, Steve also says that would be abysmal business selling Onana then signing <laughs> on Yeho for 20 million it would be completely baffling I wouldn't sign him in general as there's much better players for less and younger yeah. Fulham got Polina for less than that and he's not even a main starter for Brentford they would go literally go and sign someone who's better for half the price so how does that make sense we should um, Jake says alright lads quick fire on how many outs this window how many Hang on, how many in and how many out, sorry, this window? Uh, quick fire. Two in. One out this window. That's what I'm saying. I don't even know whether there's any reality to that, but that's what I'm saying when you're pushing me for a quick fire answer on the 11th of Jan. What are you saying? Out. Out. I think... I do. Th- I th- I've got a feeling Dan Juma will go, but it'll be like the last day. Mm. But I think you. I think it'll only be one. And how many in? One. One. Mm. Okay. Um, Bill says if McNeil is injured, can we allow Dan Juma to leave? <coughs> but I wonder about his attitude. And Patrick Ridge says thing is with Dan Juma on the right, mm. that's when he drips out of matches. He was on the right second half. He Palace and went missing. Uh, likewise on his last league staff, for Arsenal. There's a player in there, but it just doesn't see him. His best position suits Dice's uh, system. No. Yeah, I mean, Dan Juma is a wide forward, isn't he? Mm. You know, he's a wide forward rather than being what obviously our wingers are. Mm. And that that doesn't necessarily uh, that doesn't really it doesn't suit him. No. I don't think. Okay, I've just had this confirmed. Um very sad news. Billy Ingham, the star of the, the Evertonian, the star of the Barclays advert. Sadly passed away. Ah, oh, that's he, yeah. yeah. Oh. Sadly passed away Billy. today. Uh, people remembered the Barclays advert mm. where he was uh, where he was showing how much he loved Everton and stuff as uh, has passed away. So I just I didn't want to say anything until I had it absolutely no. confirmed, but I've just had it confirmed. So very very sad. Ah. Oh. Uh, back onto this, Patrick says no way Everton can let Dan Juma go without a replacement already in the building. Phil says, in my opinion, Dan Juma's movement is better than Harrison's and gets you on the edge of your seat. Something we've not seen since Della Fire. Okay. And Glenn says, talking of fire, if you had the ability to control one element, Ped, mm. Captain Planet style, yeah, would you control fire, water, wind, air, or heart? Okay. What does heart, what does control of heart actually mean? I don't know. That's the issue, isn't it? Mm-hmm. I have no um, idea. I I'll, I'll I'll go for fire. You'd be fire. Yeah. Okay. You know, just if you if you bit cold, you can just be like you can get warm. Bring it round you. Okay. Just be like, <coughs> and it, 
and it wouldn't cost anything. Mm. So keep the eating bills down. That is important. Yeah, you, know, you think about it like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sean Collins says apparently Hannibal has chosen Sevilla. Mm. Mm. Uh, G Max says could be a very bad weekend if Luton win at Burnley and we lose against Villa. We're in the bottom three. But there will be some weekends just right now where mm. things don't go our way and we have to we have to almost accept it now. Mm. Um Luton got two unlikely wins in three days the other week and that turned that dragged them right back next to us. And we hit a bad patch of losing games. So we're just right next to it. And that's the way it is. And and there might be, we might slip into the bottom three a couple of times, in my opinion, before March, say. But I do believe we are a better team with better players and will therefore be comfortable. If we get some points back, then that helps us again, doesn't it? Um, But I back Everton to get 38, 39, 40 points more than a back Luton to get that same amount. But who knows? Who knows? I just feel like we... I just feel like we're, we are just better than them. And we've won eight games. You know, we not, this shouldn't even be an issue. If we were 11 points clear of them, which is what we are, really, no one would even be talking about this. Nobody. So, but we're not. And until that... Until the hearing is sorted... We have to just accept we're one point better than them going into this weekend and hope that yeah. Burnley either beat them. And I never like other teams. I like I like two of the teams to be marooned nice, and nice gone. Draw. Nice so draw. you're just playing one. So but a draw a draw would be all right for us at the weekend. And then hopefully Everton can pull off what probably would be a little bit of a surprise result by beating Villa. Mm. But it's at home. And we owe them for that uh, I know we beat them in the League Cup, but we owe them for that performance in in August, the second game season, it was shambolic. It was. So, um, Gavin says, "Put Dan Juma up front, and he'll score more than Dom." Yeah, I'm not sure. About I'm that. not convinced with that. I can only think of the game where he got slid one on one and hit the post. Wolves, wasn't it? Was it Wolves? He went through and missed. Yeah, he was offside though, wasn't he? Yeah, but he still missed. Yeah, yeah. Later on in the game, when he got played through in the second half, and he plays it wide, he wasn't offside. He was, again, he was on the edge of the box and didn't hit the target. Mm. No, I'd still think Dom would get more goals than him. Um, Ian Bennett says Hannibal for Gomez and someone on the right for Dan Zuma. Well, Hannibal looks like he's gone to Sevilla, so. Um, mm. SB says the championship has some solid players. Liam says being linked with Ndai again, be a good signing, but if possible, but can't see it. Nope. Peter says, with all the crap going on with Triple Seven, beginning to think Mishiri should have just put us on eBay. Mm. What kind of bids would you have got, though? Yeah. That's what you've got to think, isn't it? Greg says, Triple Seven getting sued by Flair Airlines for not paying for aircraft. Yeah. Yep. Matt C says, well, surely then Dom's disallowed goals count to his season as well. If red cards are, that get ruled off. Yeah. I said that the other week about his goal. It was like when he got this loud gun spares. Like, as a striker, does he take any? Does he take anything from that goal? Because it should have been a goal. He scored the goal. It has been disallowed, but does he take anything from it? That's no. I just wondering the psyche of well, things. He should. His confidence. He should because he. You'd say, well, he finished it without knowing. There was yeah. no offside. Yeah, exactly. he, he put it away. He done exactly what you needed him to do. Mm-hmm. But it got ruled out, didn't it? Yeah. Uh, G Max says we need to put Chimiti on though. Um, Rita says, sadly, I do think Onana will go if it's true that he wants to go. Why are the Premier League dragging it out over Triple Seven? Are they doing it deliberately? We're in limbo while this goes on. Don't know. Don't know. Um, James says, probably only broken even on Sims and Cannon with their wages over the years they were at Everton. However, all the money is profit on PNF. Like that with every player, though. You, football clubs lose money. It's just, it's just a fact. Uh, Ian Bennett says, regarding Chimiti, no one mentioned Branthwaite. Uh, other stones when we shined. Mm. Mr. GKHO once says, just being realistic about Villa, would love to see us win, but can't see it. Yeah, fair enough, mate. I'm not sitting here going, we'll beat them. But 
we've got to just we we need a result like that, don't we? <coughs> a result like that where they're flying. But we need it is all we don't do great against Villa. It has to be said they've they've had a great record against us since they come back off of Goodison, especially. But other teams get results they don't you don't expect, don't they? So it's up to us. Um, yeah, people just reiterate what you said. Steve Speaks said, uh, good day from Australia. Sell nobody. Mm. Garrett says, good afternoon, lads. How many teams are looking like getting the points deduction? And will it be this season? Great show, as always. Uh, I don't know. Forrest had obviously mentioned quite a lot when they talk about points deductions. Mm. But Everton are always dragged in it as well. And I just don't think, I just don't think that would happen. Um, that we get done again. But we might get, we might get found guilty again. Because who knows? Who knows? But I don't think they get another points deduction on top of it after what they've just done. But but who knows? I, I'm not mm. seeing anything. Mm. That's the stuff we've seen this season. That's what I'm saying. You just I, don't I, know, do you? I am not seeing anything because it, it just would not surprise me. Mm. Enrico says we should try and side, sign Tube Bellingham. Tube. Mm. Isn't there another I mean, I think his name's Job. But. Isn't there like another one out there? Like, I don't know. A Steve or something? Steve. Um, Ed Bellingham. Uh, Gavin says, would you have taken Barkley back now if you knew he was going to play as well as. Well, I would have took him back anyway and did say. He was a free transfer. It was a no. It seemed like a no brainer mm. to me. Because we just don't have a player who does what he does. But yeah. fair play to him. He's gone, and I understand people who didn't want him back as well, by the way. Um, we'll see. Uh, Sambo says, I honestly think better will come good once he gets used to the Prem. <coughs> Loads of brilliant players. Took a while to come good. Steve says, if Ned's there, tell him Steve Irwin Zoo is crap. Yeah. I heard this last night, yeah. I heard, uh, I heard the zoo was rubbish. Okay. Yeah, but you wouldn't have been. I mean, you got an opportunity to go to your famous reptile place mm. in the world. Mm. Uh, it was 10 minutes away. And you, why are you vacantly looking at me like this never happened? It's all right. Don't say nothing. Your mic's down anyway, so it's all right. What are you talking about? I'm in Minnesota. The reptile place that you watch on YouTube and it was your dream to go there and it was the best thing ever and all that. And we were in Minnesota. Yeah. 10, 15 minutes maximum away and you didn't go. I think we should go to Australia just so we don't go to the zoo. Yeah, yeah. Take Ned Swear with us. Go get a hotel like five minutes away from the hotel, uh, from yeah. the zoo, but purposely not go to the mm. zoo and just see if Ned is brave enough to go he to wouldn't. the zoo on his own. He wouldn't. I'm a different man now. <laughs> Matt C says Beto is the only player I properly back when one on one with the goalkeeper just isn't Dom or Dan Juma's game or any other forwards for that matter uh, Liam yeah he is but that weirdness is what is part of Ned's character yeah je ne sais quoi <laughs> yeah je ne sais quoi wow. um, S- yeah. SB says Villa struggled against Borat the Everton player tight and organised and hit them on the counter attack Mm. And Philip McDonald says we've got more chance of signing uh, Linda Bellingham. Mm. Mm. Sean says apparently Hannibal told, I've just seen this from Fab Romano, Hannibal told Sevilla that he'd signed before Everton came in for him, give them his word, and now they're urging him not to break his word. Mm. So he's going to go there. Because so. wo- your word means That's loads, it. doesn't it, it? Well, if you haven't got your word, you haven't got anything, as far as I'm concerned. Um. Yeah, yeah. Anything on Premier? You know, so make sure you like, subscribe to the channel on the road to one hundred thousand. Are we there? Are we on the road? Are we're we? on the road now. I've just decided we're on the road. Yeah. So that but we're still, you know, we're in a very much in one of those cars where you used to have to like used the winch to wind it up in like the 1910s or whenever it was and, and to get it going for a little bit. That That's the kind of vehicle we're in driving towards that 100k, but we're definitely, so definitely it is like It's like when you fly to Australia next yeah. day. We're not, we're not at the airport yet. We're, we haven't even left the house. We're still on booking.com. But 
But I don't we're know. on the road. You know what? I don't know. I don't know. I think right. we're further along than that. I think we're further. I think there's a few people Are on we that. just waiting? Have we just changed our money? No, I think we're in the airport. Oh, wow. I think we've just been charged okay. 4823 in WH Schmidt, if that's still a thing. For a boot mail, mail for, or a boot For mail. a meal deal yeah. and a magazine and like a bottle there. Because that's how when you go there, they, they just charge whatever. You they do. Holiday tax. It's holiday. Just like, look, you're going on holiday. Okay. Money's not real. Fair play. Just spend it there. Worry about uh, it. Why has he just gone? I don't know. I don't uh, know. He's reminiscing about six. Are you just... Are you, are you, is what I'm saying resonating yeah. with you? When it, they just make any amount up and you just go, I'm on holiday, I'll pay you. Yeah. And then and all, when you come home, you're going, 48 quid in Schmitz. I only got a magazine no, I, and a I, meal deal. I, I want to be ripped off. I want to be like, yeah, I want to pay 100, 100 euros for a Jag shirt. I know I can get for 10 quid on DH Gate. I'm well, you paid 100 euros for a Jag bloody... A uh, harmonica, yeah. you could have got on yeah, Amazon yeah, for seven it quid. That's very true. It was a Jag that's one, fine. DH harmonica. <laughs> that's what. D harmonica. Not the H, it's Soccer Old Three, or whatever it is. D harmonica. D, it was the D harmonica. Um, you know the problem with that, though? Oh, they yeah, don't put God. price tags on things. Yeah. Because they want you to feel guilty. Jesse, like... Jay said not about the price tag. Well, yeah. I went up to the counter and I went, how much is this? He went, $70, man. And I went, Even though said, well, I'm so not going to put it down now. I'm Why though? That's it. just stupidity. Well, I wanted it. But for seven. But he come out and told us it was 100 I don't understand yeah. how it's gone down. Because no, shame, shame tax. It's because I said shame I have, tax. I've got $100 I need to get rid of. Why would you need to get rid of it? I think I spent the last $30 on protein shakes and drank them all at once. And that's why you've been sick ever since. <laughs> why did you need to get rid of $100? You know there are things called, like, you can go to, like, Asda and go to the currency, and they will take... I know, but you lose your value. Don't, I'd rather buy... You, know, you, you use more value by buying... By paying something that isn't worth it. $30. I don't know. That's like getting a two-for-one when you don't know, and they go, oh, you go, oh, you can have, um, you can have buy one, and the second one is, like... A half price, and even though you don't need that second one, you buy it, and you go, "I've got a bargain here." And it's like, no, you didn't, because you paid money for it. I remember when I bought. I, bought, I remember when <laughs> I buy dinner. Yeah. And when I land in the UK, because yeah. it'll be dinner time, and I bought a Five Guys and put it in my bag, and ate it like twelve hours later, and it was cold and like sweaty, and I was like, mm, "Did yuck. you not expect it to be cold and sweaty?" No, no, it was in tin foil. <laughs> That fame, remember that? No, that fame. Why don't we all just wrap our houses in tin foil? Keep the warmth in. Might work. Mm. Mm. Need a lot of tin foil. Yeah, still nice. You wear tin foil on your head. <sighs> uh, Steve says, Baz, have you seen uh, Morton Hulland at Sport? And he'd be a good one. He only signed him from Lecce this summer for 10 million. Plays defensive mid. Very good pressure. Uh, pass it and tackle it. Also, do you think Renato Vega would be on the club's radar considering similarities to Onana? I think Vega would definitely be on it. I haven't seen Morton for sport and I don't really watch that, you know, look of plays in, in Portugal that much. But, um, but yeah, Vega will definitely be. Gabriel Sara, yeah, he's not bad. He's not bad. I don't know whether would he be good enough for us. Don't know. Oh, he is good for Norwich, though. They they do like him as well. Uh, Jonathan Rickett says, would you use Patterson at right wing like Coleman did when he started his career? No. Okay. Glenn Watson says, where Toffee TV is going, you don't need roads. We need rockets. don't know if that's... Rocket fuel. Correct. But... Yeah. I mean, I don't know whether that's slightly unnerved. To be honest with you, I still believe in Rocky. Uh, Martin, I do. What are you talking about? Martin <laughs> Hennessy says, You've been watching the post office, Doc, lads. I watched the four part thing on ITV, which I'm, I'm still. Well, there was there was also a documentary on last night. Oh, Panorama. Panorama. I remember watched that last night. Uh, absolutely seething with it and upsetting and angry and all of that with the four part. It was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant and a disgrace at the same time. Um, magical fluid process it says uh, your word is important Baz totally agree absolutely it is mate without it you ain't got anything remember the mystery drink by the way yeah the mystery drink um, <laughs> didn't buy what with yeah. life Lem that's disgusting <laughs> Liam says I spent the rest on protein shakes needs to be on some toffee TV mate it's the picture of Ned like that very niche with a harm on it it is very, very niche, niche but why not um, <coughs> Garrett says, "Will you lads be doing the deadline day live again? Of course we will. Can't believe I stayed up to watch us get no one in. 
Yeah, and I imagine there It'll will be, be a similar. similar story this time, be but similar. we'll be there. Um, Celtic Vape says, welcome to Ned's Travel Tips. Yeah, absolutely. Trying to, trying to throw an idea around my head about how we can use Ned in a Carl Pilkinson style show. I just don't know how it would I, fit. It's probably more of a premier show, to be honest, than a, a YouTube one. I do really want to go on holiday this year. I haven't been on a beach holiday since I was 15. Okay. I'm 23, I'm 24 this year. Who are you going to go with? Um, would you like to go with a girl or would you like to go with well, my friends your mates? Are inviting me to go with them. As a, like they all go as a yeah, big What group. to do to look after Are they the couples? Um, no, like a, fam- like a family. You know, my quiz team. Like a family. Right, so give us the makeup of it then. So, it so who, how many of them are going? Where are they going? And I don't know. They go away like every couple of months, like, all the time. The whole quiz team. They can't believe I never went on holiday at all last year. The whole quiz team. Everyone goes on holiday. Yeah, together. Yeah. <coughs> did, did he take the keys? He's a bit incestuous. Them? This, but go on. No, they're all family. So all... It, what? So no, give us the breakdown because it sounds weird. So no, break it down. Weird. So it. No, it does. it does. So break it down so we know it isn't weird. So yeah. who've, how many's in the quiz team? Uh, well, um, well now. Is that a dead hard question? Well, now... He can't be very good on quizzes, then. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, right, so five. Are you, are you including yourself in a five or not? Yeah. So there's four. No, there's, I'm on the quiz team, too. I'm the most important one. <laughs> okay. Right, so there's four other members. I'm getting here to me and John yesterday. There's four, there's other, four members. other members. and they go away together. Yeah. And they're all right. related. Yeah. And well, they... how, how, though? How are they related? They're all a family. Yeah, but how? Like... What? Tell me the relationship. Is it a mum and dad and and the sister, mum and, and stepdad? So basically, so it's there's a, a family who want to take you on holiday with them. So who else goes with them? After brother and sister got girlfriend and boyfriends. Well, the lad who was on our quiz team, who's not on our quiz team because the lad and the girl broke up. So yeah. the girl who's still on the quiz team, she splits up with her fella, yeah. and his dad doesn't come either anymore, does he? No. Right. So you're left with a mum and a stepdad. So mum and a dad, we're gonna call them. What? Then we've got a daughter who's now single. Is there any chance you can? No. No. Okay. Um, and then the her brother. Is that right? Yeah. So well, as her brother. So yeah, I know. But has her brother got? A, no. a, so essentially, it's a family of four offering mm-hmm. to take you with them. Yeah. So what will you do? Will you spend the night just all quizzing? Will you go looking for an international quiz somewhere? Uh. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, that's all I was asking. Is that what they do now? That's all I was asking. Uh, did they go away all together now? Uh, yeah. So, did they go away quizzing? <coughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't so, know. what's been what's being mentioned? Like, where where are they thinking of going? Yeah. A beach holiday? Where are they thinking well, of where going? Where was the last place they I don't went? Know. They got well. They've got family in um, Barcelona. So oh, okay. So, so they're going to be with a larger family. So, there's a family of four, they take, and like, they're going to be with a larger family. And they want to take you. They always take along friends with them. Dude. <laughs> and also... Chris, and can I ask you a question? Do the friends come back? Yeah. Okay. And There's also the keys my, in my friend Kiris, who had the, the, you know, the surgery, you, yeah. he said, do you want to go on a, a ski resort holiday? Like, ski, like Bulgaria. Who said this? And I watched Hot Tub Time Machine. Have you seen... Can I like, ask yeah. Have you seen Taken? Because this has got Taken vibes in it. No, I'm not going to be taken and kidnapped. And sold. I just want to go skiing, man. Oh please! So you want you've just said you haven't been on a beach holiday. Now you've gone to skiing. Yeah, but I can do multiple holidays. Of course you can. But who are you gonna go skiing with? The well, quiz team. No, Chris wants to go to a ski lodge resort. Chris Belen, Chris. Yeah. No, yeah. he's got a Belen. No, I know he's not a Bell. Bell Sorry, I should have yeah. rephrased that. It's, it's Chris, who's Bell. now got a Belen. Him. Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> Fair play. Well, you know he's, he's he took his hat off, Annie. Are we still live? Um, Okay, I'm just now I'm fascinated by Ned's how Ned arrives at a holiday destination. That's all. That's just, fine. Well, I know I've not been on holiday since we went to America, <laughs> mate. I'm not having. I'm not having go yet. I just wanted to know. For six years. Then. I just wanted to know logistics. That I was just all. Love the fact that a family of four want to take him on holiday with them. That's fine. Go, they obviously I'm really like him. They've invited them into their inner sanctum, mm. which is the quizzes, and maybe they want to invite yeah. them to their inner sanctum on holiday. Bit, like. Sounds fair play to you. I'm not, I feel like I'm missing out by not going on holiday. You, you are, I you probably be, are. Sounds. I should be enjoying my holidays. Who's stopping you from going on holiday? I just don't want to go on my own. But you've had, you, you should get a little, you've I had think... mates and you've had people.
people like you could have gone with. Get like a cream suit, like a nice Panama hat. Yeah. And just book yourself a nice mm. holiday to the Met. Mm. And just, you'll, you'll meet people. No people problem. do go away on holiday on their own. Yeah, I know. But... You could have gone for like three or four days somewhere mm. where it's nice, dead easy city. But well, Or you can just go somewhere where there's a beat. Mm. You'd have met people, no problem. You travel now. Oh, I could just like lie on a beach and listen to music and stuff. You could. could. Absolutely. I'd go walking on my own. Don't you? Do that. You don't like the heat though, really, do you? On a holiday, yeah. You like it on a holiday? Okay. Okay. Who are we to say anything? Maybe yeah. we can all go on holidays. No, together. it's not happening. No, I mean, I'm going on holiday with my family, Business. with my wife and my <laughs> children. No, sadly, mate. Business meeting abroad? Um, no. no. That's not what a holiday is. No. It's not what a holiday is. No. When we went to America, it wasn't a holiday. Mm. You thought it so was. So I've not been on a holiday it's since. It's not a holiday. A ho- when the time's not your no, own. No, you've been on holiday. Wish we didn't go on holiday. We went to work. You forgot that it was work and thought it was you and Cam abroad. Um, there you go. Uh, Key, Key B says, been arguing with a fella all day, saying not to believe tabloid nonsense about young people being useless with money. Ned's just broke me. I'm quite good. Um, Pontons, you could go, yeah. says Sambo. Yeah. No. Basic Trig says, can Ned go on a saga holiday? Mm. I think he'd enjoy it, to be fair, because mm. it, it'd be like low-key for you. Uh, Liam says, Ned and the quiz team on tour, <laughs> crying faces. Um, uh, Celtic Vape says, it's the quiz team from Phoenix Knights. Yeah, Ned's by my army. Um, Garrett says, oh my God, Baz, that's a great idea. Ned takes on the world with his guitar. It'd be great. Imagine Ned and Carl doing a duo. Oh, That'd Ned just going around the world and just joining different quiz teams every week. That would be good. Places. And seeing if he could in, in, you improve, know, them. Yeah. Yeah, improve them. <laughs> Liam says, please never get rid of Ned. He's a national treasure. We, 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 you know, it's up to him, isn't it? He keeps performing at a high level. He'll be here. Um, Matt C says, does Everton use Horizon software to manage their accounts? <laughs> Probably, Apparently yeah. they do. Um Sambo says, ask Ned what the capital of Canada is. Is it Toronto? No. Vancouver? No. Um, Oslo it is. It's Oslo. Okay. I thought you knew that. No, I did. I clearly, clearly not. Okay. I thought you did know that. It's Oslo and I'll, I'll send you an image mm. of it now. Right now. It's mm. Oslo. Oh, he's absolutely for you. Um... Steve Speak says, is Ned going as the gimp? Um, <laughs> that's disgusting. Um, Danny says, thinks it sounds a bit sus. Then wants does, to take does, you on all of these. does well, sound terrifying. I don't really care. How old are these kids, by the way? I went to school with Lisa. And Jonah was a year above us. Okay. So Liam says, <laughs> I can't look at these. Mum and stepdad. Liam, three, I can't. 23 and 24 year old. That, that's fair enough, enough to be honest. To be honest, you're just a mate, aren't you, of them yeah. kids? So but it's I'm a mate listen. of their parents as well. Yeah, no. I mean, that's that. I'll be honest, Ned. That makes it feel a bit weird. Oh, mate of the kids are sound. The kids are your age. That's not normal. Mrs. Patterson. <laughs> yes, Ned walking now. When she comes down in a bikini, Ned's oh, gonna be Patterson. like, "Oh, Miss Patterson." Um, Ned's in a cult. Says Celtic mate. Uh, um, All I wanna do is do it. <laughs> big boy, big boy. All I wanna do is do it. Brett Bree says, I live in Dubai. Come over to you. you He'll meet up with you. Um, You'll be shorted. Bocker says, comedy gold here, lads. Love it. Mm. Liam says, lovely Ned on holiday with his quiz team does sound dodgy. I, I paraphrased. Day. Dubai in July. Beautiful. Just lovely, cool mild weather. Lovely, cool. I'm just answering questions, man. Liam says, Ned has to put Factor 50 on to put the bathroom light on. It's too, to be fair, yeah. Um, oh, uh, where are we? Imagine Ped and Baz tagging along with Ned and his quiz team. Ned and Ab. Oh my it's god. No space. Um, what do you mean there's no space? Ned will end up like Castaway, someone says. It is Danny Kelly, it is. Ned will end up That in is a... correct, but let's leave it at what Ned we will said end up for in a Bulgarian hostel. Um, yeah. Save a bit of money. Prep Bree says, I live in Dubai, come here at 36. Hmm. True Blue, happy to help. Um, Ruben says could be the end up being the ginger version of Get Out um, Steve P says ask Ned if he can do a cover of Kings of Leon 
cold desert. Look, oh. yeah, oh, I'm see, dedicated to me. That song makes me cry. Abigail, you're correct, and um, and we all know what it is. And and now we've we've educated Ned, and he knows what it is. Uh, Stephen Lee, I'm I'm halfway through it, and it's quality. You're right, right. We will be live on more than a game in six minutes. I don't know whether we'll be discussing Ned's quiz team, but hey, you never know because sometimes mm. you've got to spread the love, haven't you? Um, his quiz team. You've got to, haven't you? Ned and his quiz team. We've got to spread the word of how, how strong they are. Have how... we ever been on a quiz team before? Quizzy Mac Jizzy. Funnily enough, Ned, no. No. Not not like an incestuous one, no. Mm, definitely. Uh -oh, we're just like really good. Yeah. Ped and Ned in Barcelona, says Liam. Who knows? Mm. Who knows? I'm not sure Bas uh, Ned could find Barcelona on a map. Of course I could. Of course I can. Barcelona. It's in Italy. Yeah. On a map? Yeah. Of course I can. Well, where is it then? <laughs> ridiculous. Well, go on, show me now where it is. Don't be ridiculous. Well, first of all, if we're here... I love this. I love... Right, it's yeah. no good if you haven't Europe. got your camera on. Spain. If your yeah. camera is Portugal's not... Portugal's here. Put your camera Barcelona's on. Barcelona's here. Put your camera on and show the world where Barcelona is. Put your camera on for a sec and just show the world how you know where Barcelona is. Get Google Maps. No, that's no, you, you can't, can't have Google, Google Maps. Maps. He's looking at Google Maps. No. He's ruined it. No, no. no. I was just going to show it. No, it's all right. It's no. all right. You've ruined it. You've ruined it. It was just a little bit of, and you, you could have just gone and done it. I do know. You've, you've told it's the world. It's well. Spain, <coughs> right next to Portugal. Yeah. Right. Spain yeah. is right next Barcelona to Portugal. You could have. Spain. Oh. I mean, there you go. Nailed it. There you go. Absolutely. Um, I mean, uh, we should put you on race around the world. Mm. You, I'd be sure. To. No, yeah, I'd be sure. Oh, to. yeah, you'd be amazing, amazing on it. You'd live the dream. You'd win the legs all the time. Yeah. So fair play to you. Fair play to you. <laughs> right, we're going. We're going. Stay here. In five minutes, we'll be on more than a game discussing other footy. And you know what? If there's not that much news, we'll carry on with Ned's education. Ooh, Incredible. Ooh. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, do all that. See you in a bit.